In a leaked recording, Amazon Cloud Chief tells employees that most developers could stop coding as soon as AI takes over. And when he thinks that's going to happen is a bit concerning. He's saying, if you look forward 24 months from now, or some amount of time, I can't exactly predict where it is, it's possible that most developers are not coding. So this is the AWS CEO, Matt Garman, sharing his thoughts on the topic during an internal fireside chat held in June. And it looks like there was a leak of this recording that was published on Business Insider. Garmin continues, coding is just kind of the language that we talk to computers. It's not necessarily the skill in and of itself. The skill in and of itself is how do I innovate? How do I go build something that's interesting for my end users to use? This means that the job of software developer will change. It just means that each of us has to get more in tune with what our customers need and what the actual end thing is that we're trying to build, because that's going to be more and more of what the work is, as opposed to sitting down and actually writing the code. Now, of course, you might know there's a huge debate about this. A lot of tech companies are laying off massive amounts of employees. At the same time, some of them are putting billions and billions of dollars into building up the AI infrastructure. At the same time, we have more and more AI tools that automatically generate code. Now, it's not perfect, it's not complete, it's not completely replacing developers quite yet, but people are concerned. There's a lot of debate. Of course, if you look at the publicly traded companies, kind of where they're putting their money, certainly it seems like they believe that if they invest enough in AI, that will help them decrease the amount of money they're paying to developers. Whether or not that happens remains to be seen. A lot of people who are very strong, very good developers do show great doubt or great disbelief in this idea that AI-assisted tools will be replacing them anytime soon. And of course, most of the CEO and business leaders that are investing in AI aren't really saying that this is the end of developers. For example, in Garmin's case, he's sharing advice rather than issuing a dire warning. He's not saying that developers will go extinct because of AI. His tone is more optimistic. He's saying that AWS is helping employees continue to upskill and learn about new technologies and increasing productivity with the help of AI. So AI is to augment their abilities, not necessarily to just replace them. So I wanted to take a second here and take a look at what all the other big leaders in the AI space are saying about this intersection of AI and software development. Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, has spoken about how he sees AI intersecting with software development. So has Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA. And so has Iman Mostak, who is the ex-CEO of Stability AI. He was the one that founded the company, built it up to where it is now. And he has since stepped down to let other people continue moving the company forward. But really fast, let's take a listen to what they think, what they have to say and where they think this is going. I want to talk about education. So today, knowing what you know, seeing what you see, and being at the cutting edge of this technology, what should people focus on when it comes to education? What should they learn? How should they educate their kids and their societies? Well, excellent question. I'm going to say something, and it, it's, it's going to sound completely opposite um, of what people feel. Uh, you, you, you probably recall, uh, over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. And that the programming language, it's human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle. This is the miracle of artificial intelligence. For the very first time, we have closed the gap. The technology divide has been completely closed. And it's the reason why so many people can engage artificial intelligence. It is the reason why every single government, every single industrial conference, every single company is talking about artificial intelligence today. Because for the very first time, you can imagine everybody in your company being a technologist. Mm. And so this is a tremendous time for uh, all of you to realize that the technology divide has been closed. Or another way to say it, the technology leadership of other country has now been reset. The countries, the people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology or in education of young people or in manufacturing or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise 
now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do, to help automate your work, to amplify your productivity, to make you more efficient. And so I think that this is just a tremendous time. Um, the impact, of course, uh, is, is great, and your imperative to activate and take advantage of the technology is absolutely immediate. Um, and also to realize that to engage AI is a lot easier now than at any time in the history of computing. It is vital that we upskill everyone, and the upskilling process, I, I believe, will be delightful, surprising, um, to realize that this computer can perform all these things that you're instructing it to do and doing it so easily. So if I was going to choose a uh, major in university as a degree that I'm going to pursue, what would you give me as an advice for something to pursue? If I were starting all over again, um, I would realize uh, one thing, that one of the most complex fields of science is the understanding of biology, human biology. Not only is it complicated because it's so diverse, so complicated, so hard to understand, living and breathing, it is also incredibly impactful. Complicated technology, complicated science, incredibly impactful. For the very first time, and, and remember, we call this field life sciences. And we call drug discovery, discovery, as if you wander around the universe and all of a sudden, hey, look what I discovered. Nobody in computer science, nobody in computers, and nobody in the traditional industries that are very large today, nobody says car discovery. We don't say computer discovery. We don't say software discovery. We don't go home and say, hey, honey, look what I found today. This piece of software, we call it engineering. And every single year, our science, our computer science, our software becomes better and better than the, than the year before. Every single year, our chips get better. Every single year, our infrastructure gets better. However, life sciences is sporadic. If I were to do it over again right now, I would realize that the technology to turn life engineering, life science to life engineering is upon us. And that digital biology will be a field of engineering, not a field of science. It will continue to have science, of course, but not a field just of science in the future. And so uh, I hope that, that this is gonna start a whole generation of people who enjoy working with proteins and chemicals and, and enzymes and um, materials, and, and they're engineering these amazing things that are more energy efficient, that are lighter weight, that are stronger, that are more sustainable. All of these inventions in the future are going to be part of engineering, not scientific discovery. There's a few people who are scared shitless, and we'll talk about some of the stuff coming down the pipeline later. Because, you know, Peter and I had a discussion, like, should we scare everyone shitless completely, or should we kind of do hope? And so I'm going to do hope, actually. I think I'm going to focus on this. This is the most disruptive thing ever because, again, humans can scale, so you don't need as many humans. There was an MIT study, I think I'll send it to you, which just came out. It showed that basically the third to the seventh decile yes. got like 30% better. The top 5% got orders of magnitude better or multiples better with this technology. And so it lifts humanity and the ability to communicate and do things. I think, I think we always have to look at the unchanging between versus the inevitable. So an inevitable is 41% of all code on GitHub right now is AI generated. Wow. To six months. <laughs> ChatGPT can pass a GLUE level three programmer exam and it will run pretty much on a MacBook or a phone. And that's this year. year? This year, right now. Yeah. There are no programmers in five years. No programmers in five years. So those of you with kids who you are having, you know, with Python lessons and so forth, maybe it's instead helping them to understand uh, how to ask great questions or give great directions or prompts. Yeah, like with this, this is a technological marvel that we sped up a hundred times because we have amazing developers and we have communities of hundreds of thousands. I went to GPT-4 and I said, help me write some code to change the nature of inference to something called int8 to int4, which is only a year old, so it's not in the data set. And, and it figured it out and it, it worked. Figured it out. Awesome. Straight out. I asked it to create asteroids in D3. I love with asteroids. With a high school thing, yeah. And I copy-pasted it, it worked, the game, straight out. So again, we have to kind of think about this, and we have to think, but what can you do? Well, the answer is you can do anything now. Because a lot of the stuff that blocked you isn't there anymore. Any of you can now be creative. Any of you can now 
build systems. And so you build the systems that adhere to the unchanging demands of people to make their lives better. And that's value and they'll pay you for that value. Developers who are using GitHub Copilot are 50 odd percent more productive, staying more in the flow. We have around 100 million professional developers. We think the world probably can get to a billion professional developers. And so that'll be a massive uh, increase in total developers because the barriers to being a software developer are gonna come down. This doesn't mean uh, the great software developers won't remain great software developers, but the ability for more people to enter the field will increase. So I think they there will be a way for us to reskill ourselves. To your point, always displacement is about picking up new skills. What if we reduce the barrier to picking up new skills right in the job that you're doing? And that's, I think, what's perhaps going to be different in this time around.